Hello, everyone, and welcome to the uh, first uh, sort of online music lesson thingy. Um, I'm sure you're all going to be very disappointed to hear that since we're going online, we are actually not going to continue with the Maypole. Uh, I know. I'm sure that there's a lot of sadness amongst you over that fact, but yet we're, we're throwing it away. Throwing it away. Um... Well, actually, we're not. We're not actually throwing it away. Um, so actually, let's let's actually go back, grab it, bring it on back. Say, I'm I'm sorry I did that to you. Um, that was wrong of me. Uh, I didn't know what I was thinking. I should have never treated you like that. Um, we're showing a lot of uh, emotional maturity here. See, here in here in my classroom, we don't just learn music lessons. We also learn life lessons. Learning and growing. I don't, I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Did I have a script for this? Yes. Have I already just started rambling about random things? Bingo. Um, but let's, uh, let's continue on with uh, the actual stuff. Anyway, despite getting rid of the Maypole, it still has left me with the awkward uh, job of trying to work out how do I teach music uh, online when I have no clue what sort of resources people have available at home. But I've been trying to think of it instead of like uh, a negative, like what can't we do? I'm trying to think what can we do in these online lessons that would have been impossible to do in our ordinary classroom. So what we're going to try and do over this lockdown is we are going to go through the creation of a song from recording and uh, arranging it all the way to mixing and producing it, uh, depending on, of course, how long this lockdown actually lasts. So each week we are going to focus on a different instrument. Sort of, let me, let me get, I got some notes here. <laughs> Forgive me for having to read. Uh, so each week we're going to focus on a different instrument and talk a bit about its history, construction, uh, how it all works and how you play it. Uh, and we'll end each video by, uh, <laughs> I'm realizing now that I can't read very well. We'll end each video uh, by adding that new instrument to our recording. I'm hoping... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yes, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, I'd love to take on board your sort of suggestions and incorporate your ideas and knowledge into the videos as well as we go along. We'll see how that all pans out. So I bet you're all wondering, well, what instrument are we going to be looking at today? I mean, unless I've put the instrument in the title, in which case, no one's wondering that. Uh, but anyway, today we are going to be looking at the ukulele. Um, well, I put that very close to my mouth. How, how loud is this? Hello? Now, I, I already hear a collective groan coming from the year fours all going, ah, but we've already done the ukulele last year. Um, yes, very true. Uh, but hear me out. Shush. Hear me out. The reason we're going to start with the ukulele is one, because it's a really good starting point in, in just terms of learning music in general, but also it really fits the song that we're going to do really well. And I, and I guarantee there's going to be stuff you're going to learn in this video that you didn't learn last year. So strap in. Okay. And now you might also be wondering, well, well, Sam, what, what song are we going to be, what, what are we going to be learning? What are we going to be recording over these few weeks? Is it going to be our own song? Uh, no, it's not going to be our own song. Uh, <laughs> I would like it to be our own song. Uh, originally, I was going to do this sort of thing where we try and write the song over the weeks, and we might still try and incorporate some of those aspects into it, but I figured that's sort of an idea I would rather reserve for later on when we're all together and we can all sort of work together and talk together to create the song together. Sang together a lot. So what song are we going to do then? Well, thank you. I'm glad you asked. Well, the song we are going to do is probably the song that most French people are very tired of English people talking about, which is La Vie en Rose. Um, reason for that is because, one, it's a really good song. No arguments there. Two, I think it works really well for the sort of thing that we're going to be putting together by layering more instruments. It's just a very nice and open song for that kind of, you know, thing. And finally, uh, if we decide to use the French lyrics um, instead of the English, that will force me to have to practice my French. Um, so then it will be a win-win for all of us. So keep that in mind. Thank you very much. Anyway, um, we've talked a lot. We've had a lot of fun here. But let's get into the actual lesson and start talking about the ukulele.
All right, hello. I've had a I've had a relevant costume change, uh, relevant to the topic that is. Uh, it is freezing <laughs> in here, but I'm committed to the part, and we're gonna go with it. But I'm not committed to these sunglasses. I can't see anything. Basically, do excuse me. I'm going to be reading from my script because uh, there's a lot of stuff, and I'll be honest, I haven't learned it all by heart because that's a lot of time. So the ukulele in the grand scheme of things is actually a pretty recent instrument. It uh, sort of first came into fruition in 1879 when uh, Portuguese immigrants from Madeira uh, came to Hawaii for work, bringing with them uh, some similar Portuguese instruments like the machete, the cavaquino, Uh, the temple and the Cajon. We don't actually really know who made the first ukulele. All we know is that someone saw the Portuguese uh, instruments and were like, "Dang, that's that's pretty cool. I like that." But I, I'm gonna make my own. And so they took the uh, they took the cava cavaquinho that one and then they uh they were like i'm getting rid of these strings i'm gonna replace them with nylon strings because the steel strings be hurting my little fingies and i'm gonna i'm gonna tune it differently and i'm gonna make a few little little additional changes and then what do you know sooner or later we ended up getting our modern day uh ukulele uh, the origin of the ukulele's name is sort of unclear there's sort of a bit of bit of debate over exactly what it came from uh, the most common sort of idea is that the rough translation of yuka and lele ends up being a uh, jumping flea and it's believed that that's due to the quick movements of the ukulele player's fingers uh, when it's uh, played uh, some even suggest now hear this some even suggest this name was inspired by one particular ukulele player called edward william purvis who uh, was rather small and fidgety but very good at playing Queen Lilia Kalani uh, presented another less common origin for the name using the other meanings of yuka and lele being a uh, gift and come, suggesting that the name means a gift that came to us from far away. You know, so up to you over whether you believe the jumping flea translation, which is the more uh, widely accepted one, or the gift from elsewhere uh, translation. So, how did it uh, become so popular? G good question, thank you. Um, well, uh, that is thanks to three guys. Uh, Manuel Nunes. Oh, this is gonna be bad. Uh, Jose do Espírito Santo. And Augusto Diaz. Uh, they were basically the first uh, professional ukulele makers, and they used to do these big nightly performances with their ukuleles on the, the, the Hawaiian, you know, streets. Eventually, uh, Diaz was invited to perform for King Kalakaua, uh, and who was not just a king, but also a very well-respected musician and uh, composer of the time. And he was like, dang, this instrument's groovy. And uh, he, he basically started playing it himself, and then he even started incorporating ukulele performances into royal gatherings. So that really blew up its popularity amongst the locals. By the 1920s and 30s, the ukulele had traveled from Hawaii all the way to uh, the UK, and it started to become very popular amongst British pop singers of the time, like George Fornby. Now I go window cleaning to earn an honest bob. For a nosy parker, it's an interesting job. Now it's a job that just suits me. A window cleaner you would be if you can see what I can see when I'm cleaning windows. And uh, Tessie O'Shea. They call it two chances. Two chances, zero angle. Tear the sea, yes, they call it. It was also quickly adopted by some American vaudeville performers like Roy Smeck and Cliff Ukulele Ike Edwards. Oh honey, it's so funny the way I feel with you. Um, which led to its uh, use by popular jazz singers like Gene Austin.
What have we got lips for? What have we got arms for? Why do we have stars above? Oh, you know, I know everything's made for love. I realize for you no time has passed, but for me I had just finished recording the entire video when I realized that this camera only records 12 minutes at a time. So I have just spent the last hour uh, talking to a camera that wasn't filming anything. Please excuse me. Here's a bit of a personal little theory I have here. Uh, while a lot of these old jazz songs from the 20s and 30s are usually performed with a big old jazz band, uh, I can't help but feel like maybe, just maybe, they were actually written on ukuleles. Now, I, I have no evidence for this. Uh, I just realized that when playing these songs on a ukulele, it just feels, I don't know, it feels so natural. It's like all the chords just flow into each other so well. Let, let me show you what I mean. Five foot two, eyes are blue, but oh, what those five feet could do has anybody seen my gal? Turn up nose, turn down hose, a flapper, yes sir, one of those has anybody seen my gal? You know, or ain't she sweet? You see her walking down that street and I ask you very confidentially, ain't she sweet? And I ask you very confidentially, ain't she nice? A lot of them like to end with that. Um, what about, uh... I know, I know you belong to somebody you But tonight you belong to me I'll see you in my dreams Hold you in my dreams Some... Oh, got hair in my mouth Someone took you out of my arms But still I feel the It's a bit out of tune. <laughs> anyway, eventually the ukulele even found its way into country music at the time. I was happy as I could be Where the mockingbirds sang at night While they rest in that dear old sunny south by the sea Its use in popular music, coupled with its affordability, simplicity, and portability, made the ukulele a very popular choice amongst the everyman of the time. Uh, with many music stores actually selling as many ukuleles as they did guitars, and sheet music for the ukulele becoming readily available. Even Elvis played the ukulele. The ukulele then started making its sway elsewhere around the world, including Japan, where it really took off and is still really popular today. After its sudden growth, however, things started to go downhill for the ukulele. By the 1950s, mass production of plastic goods had really blown up, and one of the products that found its way into stores were plastic ukuleles. While this made it ukuleles more accessible than ever, it also made people start to think of them as these cheap novelty instruments. Then in the 60s, this guy named J. Chalmers Doan decided, hey, this instrument's pretty cool. I think it could be a pretty good education tool. And so then schools started using the ukuleles uh, to teach music, which was fantastic. But unfortunately, it just further cemented this idea that ukuleles were just an instrument for children and people who could sing really high. So, was that the end of the ukulele? Did it fade into obscurity, never to be played again? I mean, of course not. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about it right now and I'm, I'm holding one. What, what, are you, what are you thinking? 
basically the ukulele had a major resurgence in the 90s and 2000s when uh, people like Hawaiian musician Israel Kamaka Vivole Beatles guitarist George Harrison. I don't want you, but I hate to lose you. You got me in between the devil and the deep blue sea. And ukulele virtuoso Jake. Shimabukuro. began releasing ukulele music and really hyping up the instrument to a new audience and it sort of just blew up again from there. People like Jim Bailoff also helped grow the ukulele's popularity by releasing a ton of ukulele music books, making the ukulele more accessible to learn than ever. After that, its popularity just continued to grow and grow to the point where it's still being played by popular musicians like Vance Joy, Lady, run and run to the red tide. 21 Pilots, Wise Man, and every second amateur YouTube songwriter today. And it makes sense. Its popularity, easy to learn nature and affordability make it a great choice of instrument. Today it's even Hawaii's national instrument and you can find countless ukulele bands in Canberra alone. Anyway, I know I said at the beginning of the video that we were going to continue to talk about how to play the ukulele and the parts of the ukulele and all that sort of stuff, but I realized that with all my yammering, uh, this video has gone way too long. Um, so we're actually gonna, we're gonna cut the video here um, and we're gonna save all of that stuff for a part two for next week. So get keen for that. Uh, your homework this week is I would like you to think about an instrument. I don't care what instrument. Um, Maybe it's one you have at home. Maybe it's one you just like the sound of. Maybe it's something that, you know, your relatives play. Think about that instrument and I want you to do a bit of research into it. Find some cool facts about it. And so that when we meet up and do some live video chats next week, we can sort of share what we've discovered about our instrument. Sound good? Oh, and even if you, if you happen to own the instrument, feel free to try and learn a song or something to show off for us next week. It'd be great to be able to share some, you know, musical uh, talents that we've, you know, we've all got amongst ourselves. So that'd be really fun to see. So that's, that's your task. I realize I said homework. I'm, I'm pretty sure everything's going to be homework now, but that's just your work for the week. So uh, I'll catch you uh, online and uh, have a good one. Thank you.